it's Sunday 20th of June 2021 I'm in the east dunes of the Hague today now this used to be a regular route of mine but I've kind of held off since I had the injury knee injury uh, one reason I like it is that I can pretty much go 100% on trails here and keep out of the way of road traffic etc but uh, ideally to do that I need to cycle first of all and it's been that combination of cycling and running I've been warned worrying about antagonizing the injury so it's a scorching hot day today temperature isn't that high I think it's about 23 or 24 Celsius but because of the thunderstorms that keep rolling in and so we had one overnight the humidity's just gone up and up and up over the past few days so I'm going to take it very easy but it's nice to be out in the dunes so this is about a 10k loop or a 12 kilometer loop depending on where I go I'm going to see how I'm doing after 6k is whether I do the extra part of the loop or head back at that point about 7k in so doing a kind of extra little loop decided to even though it's hot and just taking it very easy as I said before just concentrating in the next few weeks and months on just not antagonizing injuries not bringing them back just trying to rest them as much as I can uh, the vaccine situation I think I've talked about it before uh, there's a lot more chatter in the UK press about whether the government is going to accept van uh, vaccine against the coronavirus as an entry uh, criteria for coming in to the UK at the moment it isn't it's ignored you still need to deliver all these well from an amber country which is most of the world you have to deliver three tests one before you get on the plane one on day two and one on day eight of your quarantine you must go quarantine now a number of countries have now come out and said well basically the quarantine uh, can be foregone or it can be shortened if you have vaccine and uh, we might just do I might just do one test for monitoring purposes there's been a lot more chatter I mentioned in the British press which normally suggests somebody in the government has spoken to somebody else to try and garner what opinion is on this issue so there may be an announcement tomorrow we'll wait and see but it's the way the whole EU is going now so vaccine certificates or colloquially called passports will come into force will come in on the 1st of Ju July and the essential rules for those is you can still travel freely within the EU provided you've either been double vaccinated or you've got a negative PCR test uh, or you've actually been infected and recovered and then you get a little QR code it's like the little boarding pass scanner so when you go through the airport you just scan your, your code you can get them printed out as well and then you're free to go without any additional requirements now in individual countries can impose extra criteria so one that some have been doing recently it's particularly affected the UK is because of a variance of concern and the Delta variant is a variant of concern so for some countries UK is actually on the red list at the moment along with India right. yeah. uh, and uh, South Africa Brazil Argentina and so on um, I'll talk a bit more about that situation in a moment but the hope is well that's my hope personally is that once I get my second vaccine I'll wait 14 days I'm hoping by then there's a decision to let me back into my own country without too many requirements and I think that's probably what's prompted the discussion in the media is the fact that 
lots of British holiday makers have suddenly started going abroad and saying, oh look, these lovely countries like Spain and Portugal that let me in. And it's getting back into my own country is where suddenly got all these texts to do, examinations, mandatory 10 day quarantine. And uh, I think that's probably prompted the discussion. So let's see over the next few days whether the UK allies itself with the EU and the US and Canada, which I thought they would do immediately after the G7 summit, but they didn't quite, and uh, sees vaccine status as an additional criteria to help you travel more freely. Let's see. So after last week I showed you the, the higher points of the uh, West Dunes, this is one of the higher points in the, the east dunes of The Hague, or certainly uh, south of uh, Vassenaar. Um, and you're looking down on the Mandel, and there's a little uh, kind of, uh, farm in there, um, kind of kids can go to ventures, and the mon monkey boss, the monkey woods, all sorts of stuff to play on, restaurant in there, and all that sort of thing, very family friendly. Um, so you can see the extent of the dunes, and you can, should be able to see the Hague Centre there with the Five Sisters, the big tall buildings of the Hague Centre. So just a quick update on the coronavirus in the UK. So the, in the UK the rates have kind of gone up a little bit since last week but they've kind of plateauing at the moment so they're running at about um, just over 10 per 100,000 infections at the moment so they kind of shot up initially and then seemed to stabilise. So bear in mind that's still about a fifth of what the peak rates were uh, back in the, uh, the last surge and for example what the Netherlands were experiencing about eight weeks ago. So it's still not very high, it's still about a, a fifth but of course lots of countries have now issued warnings about travelling to the UK. Now the Dutch situation, I mentioned last weekend they were just at the crossing point. Well the Dutch have now dropped below so they were at about that sort of rate about two weeks ago. Now they're down at about five per hundred thousand, so about half the rate of the UK. Um, and the Netherlands has now announced they're going to do almost full unlocking by next Saturday, it's Saturday the 26th. And what that means is it's pretty much everything apart from social distancing, the 1.5 metre rule that will be dropped. Um, and so for example masks will go, all that sort of thing, capacity in, in places, as long as you can maintain 1.5 metres distance. So anywhere you can't, so for example public transport or airports, um, then you do need to wear your mask still, but everywhere else you can drop it now. I've got small shops, I know everybody will immediately drop the mask because it's a very Dutch thing to do. Um, they'll say, oh no, I don't need to wear them anymore and ignore the rule about 1.5 and, and there's too many shops that there's no way you can maintain that sort of distance. So play it safe for a little while. But anyway, they're going through full unlocking huge benefit I think with the weather you know most people are now outside or their houses are open and fully ventilated so at the moment you can have four visitors in the home and it will go up to however many you can fit in which although they've still got the 1.5 meter because I don't think it's a coincidence that it's the Euro uh, football championships at the moment and the Dutch are doing quite well and people want to crowd together again and support their team so I don't think that's a coincidence also not a coincidence I don't think is the fact that the Dutch government are still in caretaker mode, they still haven't formed a government so I don't know how much responsibility de Jong and people like that the, who's, who heads up the health ministry at the moment really has um, full political responsibility because uh, they can pretty much just hand it on to the, next, to the government as it forms. So we'll see on that, that might be a bit more controversial, um, some of my Dutch friends and colleagues. Anyway that's the situation, um, I'm hoping the UK situation carries on plateauing and then coming down slightly as the vaccine effect really kicks in because that's definitely been so protective. I mean bear in mind the Dutch have just gone through a huge third surge over the winter period so we talk about a third potential wave in the UK. It could form that, it might just be a ripple um, but really in effect the Dutch and a number of European countries effectively had a third and even a potential fourth wave over the winter period and that that last one particularly in the Netherlands was prolonged so it didn't peak but it carried on at a very high rate over at 40 per 100,000 that's four times what the UK rate is at the moment 
uh, that carried on for several weeks so there's more people infected in that period than there had been in the previous surges so there we go anyway hopefully the vaccine effect in all countries is going to take effect and we can get more vaccines to um, to the developing to the third world countries as well so that they can also can also help their populations so um, I think that's the big the big hope now with mass production of vaccines um, going on now worldwide and again don't forget this has been an amazing effort to foot to get to even 80% vaccination even partial 80% partial vaccination in the UK it's just unfeasible to think of a vaccination program that large and that that prolonged and so quick through the development testing authorization safety checks all of that being done and it really has been a testament i think to to all concerns you know the scientists um to those in government and um those in public health those in uh, the pharmaceutical industry those in the universities that have made this all possible it's just quite an incredible effort and those of course frontline staff nhs staff health staff here uh, gps nurses um, pharmacists all who've signed up to do the vaccinations it's just an amazing effort anyway i'm almost back i've got about another two kilometers to run i'll get a downhill surge to start with and i'm going past that tower over there and now i'll find my bike and, and cycle back home